This is going to be an in-depth look at how you can do a really inexpensive fuel pressure gauge on a Ford 6 liter diesel. Basically what you got here, this is your fuel bowl. This is where your secondary fuel filter is. And uh, right on the side there, you've got a, uh, a dummy plug or a plug. And you're just going to tee in there with the little adapter. Uh, you can get those adapters on Amazon in a kit for under $10. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description for you guys so you can get that kit. Um, this here is just a grease gun whip. It's a 1 8 inch NPT on both ends. Uh, you can actually get that at Walmart uh, in the automotive section right next to the grease guns. Uh, you can also get them on Amazon too. I'll put a link in the description for that too. Then you're just going to get yourself a uh, really inexpensive eBay um, gauge and pressure transducer. This here is the resistance type of pressure transducer. Uh, it outputs in ohms, uh, 3 to 160 ohms uh, for the output. So it's basically inputting 12 volts and it's outputting uh, variable resistance. Versus uh, the, the better style, which is going to be uh, one of these. I'm actually upgrading to one of these 5 volt pressure transducers. And that's just going to screw right in there in place of my my grease gun whip and uh, pro bolt sensor there. So I basically uh, just have it wrapped around with the 1 8 inch grease gun whip going through that little eyelet there on your intake elbow. And then I've got, I'm, I just used, I was doing this really cheap. I've got less than $30 in the whole gauge setup. I used uh, some spare uh, thermostat wire that I had lying around. Yeah, it's full of thermostat wire. It's cheap. It's not. It's not. Uh, it's a solid core wire, so it, it just bends. It's not uh, braided, so it's not as flexible as it could be. But it is shielded, or it's uh, insulated rather. You're just gonna run that along uh, your main engine wiring harness. Uh, follow it all the way back here, down there. Go under your fuse box there, and then. I, I take everything in through that big hole in the firewall right there. This is my old degas pressure line. I actually just upgraded that too to another pressure transducer. So I'm going to be taking this uh, <laughs> 3 8 inch air hose out of the system. But you got a big hole right there. There's just a piece of uh, uh, aluminum tape over it. You just punch through that hole and it comes out right underneath the dash. And so I've got my my edge EAS wire going through there. I've got the uh, thermostat wire and I've got my big ass degas line coming there. Coming over to the other side of the firewall. Yeah, I probably can't see that very well, can you? So you got a piece of foam right there and the hole is right behind that foam. That foam is actually perforated. You could you could pop out that piece of foam, but I like just uh, coming up behind it. Helps keep it insulated a little bit. And uh, just running out from underneath the bottom of that foam. And uh, there's my big ass degas line and my thermostat wire. Just uh, follows this main wire bundle. Got it running back up behind the dash over to here. This is a, a cheap ass dual gauge pod. You can get those on eBay for like six or seven bucks. And this is my fuel pressure gauge right there. It's uh, the gauge and the pressure sender under the hood was uh, under $30. So if you're looking for the cheapest way to get a fuel pressure sensor, uh, you can't go wrong there. It's served me well. Um, and I do have the Blue Spring upgrade, so I always see about 60 PSI. The main issue with uh, the 12 volt uh, ohm style pressure transducers like you're seeing there is that they are uh, affected by temperature. They're not the most accurate device. They probably have a, an accuracy or plus or minus, you know, one point something degrees. See how the fuel pump just kicked off? That's a, a good way to monitor your fuel pressure. Um, and uh, you want one of these. The main reason these are good, uh, I guess if you're always getting down to where you have like zero or ten miles to empty, you want to be watching that when you're getting close to empty and you don't want to fuck up your injectors. Uh, but most people that drive responsibly and they don't let their tank get down 
you know, below uh, the E. Uh, most people are going to want this for when they change their fuel filters. You'll notice when you change your fuel filter, when you first turn the key on, this isn't going to get up to where it should be. It'll probably be between 20 and 40 there. Um, so you want to keep uh, cycling your ignition on and off until this pressure gets up to, you know, at least 50. That means it's purged a lot of the air out of the system. So honestly, the fuel pressure gauge is mostly good for changing your fuel filters, which you should be doing like, you know, at least every three months or every uh, every 10,000 miles. Now I, I'm upgrading to uh, Edge EAS system. I got a good deal on uh, this Edge CTS box here, and it has the uh, EAS uh, accessory input system. And I'm I'm switching over to uh, five volt sensors on everything. Um, so. Check out my other videos for how I'm doing that. I've got uh, transmission pressure, I've got fuel pressure, and I've got degas pressure all coming into this box here using the daisy chained EAS system. So that's pretty cool. So I'm going to have uh, degas pressure, transmission pressure, and uh, fuel pressure. So check out my other videos, and if you want to buy these, uh, Cheap ass gate, I'll put a description or a link in the description down there.